Let's put it to you that way. And what taxes do they pay? They pay the fair share? They pay what you pay? No, they don't pay what you pay. They've got triple Dutch, quadruple Irish methodologies that were created for them by former IRS lawyers working for these giants, and they pay as little as they possibly can. They get around the law, in other words. They need to be broken up for the, for the sake of competition if you want true capitalism. How could you argue with that? And yet I, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to get someone like a purist calling me, no, Mike, this is the marketplace talking. It's the free market. You should let Google become as big as it wishes. It's the free market speaking. That's stupid. That's idiotic. It's the same kind of purist stupidity that you get out of a textbook. There's a reason for antitrust legislation. And you could see it with Apple. When you have a guy like Tim Cook think he's above the law. Now, I know all of the sides of this argument. There's arguments on both sides. And as I showed you last week, there was a hacker who created a way to do it for this one phone that would not give the government extraordinary powers over your phone or anyone else's phone. Because the technology that would be created for that one phone owned by the Muslim terrorists that they want to break into would be used once and then it would be destroyed. No possible way the same solution would work on any other device, according to the hacker. Create a RAM disk, signed by the company's production certificate, certificate for the specific ECID of the suspect's phone, and that would allow Apple to use existing technologies in the firmware file format to grant access to the phone, ensuring that there is no possible way the same solution would work on another device. I understand it's not foolproof, but it's pretty close to foolproof, and we'd find out who Fareed, Farouk, whatever, was talking to after he murdered all those people in San Bernardino, him and the old lady with the, with the burqa on, the burqa couple, the burqa twins. Find out who the burqa twins were talking to, man. We need to know. I want to know who they were talking to. And what worries me here is that if Apple and Microsoft and Google are lining up together, all of a sudden they're holy, ah, we're protecting the American people. No, that's not true. Because Apple has allowed the government to go into the phone 70 times in the past. So they're hiding something. There's something in that phone that they already know. If they have the key to it, see, if the government's going to Apple and say, hey, make a key for us, it means Apple has the key already. And they went into the phone. They already looked in the phone. L let's run that theory by. Put on your uh, fiction writer's hat with me. So someone at Apple already made that encryption key, broke the encryption, looked in the phone and said, oh, my God, Mark. Mark, look at who they were talking to, Mark. This is no good, Mark. Because it goes all the way up to the people we know in the government, Mark. One theory. One fictional theory. It's a complete and total, you have to forgive me, part-time fiction writer, three New, York Times best, three New York Times bestsellers in a row. You forgot the titles already, but some of you love my uh, writing. I haven't done one. I'm not going to do another one. It's all going to be different kind of stuff. A Time for War, Countdown to Mecca, and Abuse of Power. The Jack Hatfield series is gone. It's kaput. He's dead. Jack died. I didn't kill Jack off yet, but I'm not interested in him anymore. He's dead to me. But if I were writing a novel, that's what it would be. Like, Mark, we uh, open the phone. Take a guess who he was talking to. Who? Who? Excuse me, I'm in Bloomingdale's now buying an undershirt. He was talking to fill in the blank. All right, put up some story. Get Tim to put out a story that uh, it's for. We don't want anyone uh, with the back door. What else? Mark, hold on a minute. You want the red or the crimson? I'll take two reds and three crimson. Thank you. Uh, have Timmy put out with the PR department a story that we don't want the FBI getting in because you want to protect the privacy, blah, blah, blah. You get it. Okay. That, yeah, that's a pink one, too. Get the pink one for those wild nights. Uh, yeah, that's the story. Get the PR department to put that out. That we're doing it for this security, this privacy of the American people. That's right. No, two pink, not one. Yeah, get throw in two. Two pink. Yeah, that's it. That's the one we'll do. That's the fiction story can't follow it. I don't think the audience is into me. I don't get it. I think they want to hear the three C's. They want to hear the litmus test every day. Chastity, Christianity, the Constitution. Stick to the facts, Mike. Don't be too creative. We're not interested in it. You're going off the rails again. Too much music, too much of that Latin stuff. We don't like Spanish. We want that wall. We never want to hear the language again. No Spanish on your show, please. English only. Don't play any of that Spanish jive music for us. We're strict constitutionalists. That's it. We're very, very rigid, strict constitutionalists. We, we don't hear any of that Spanish stuff on your show. No drum playing, no music. Settle down there, Mike. Stick to what you know. Just be a good conservative boy now. Get in line. Get in line. Be one of those old, good old conservative boys. Just preach the Blarney every day. 
Preach the old Blarney. Step right up. Get Step right up to the conservative Blarney show. Constitutions, Christianity, and chastity. Step right up. You know what? I decided I'm going to be me. If I'm in one of my moods like I am today, I'm going to be me. I'm going to play music. I'm going to play the drums on air, which I did. I'm going to sing on air, which I did. You missed it all. I'm going to tell you about a dance I went to last night. I'm going to play sweet music that's dead. What do you want me to do? Every day the same thing? Three hours a day, you can go brain dead from it. Or if you're born with no brains, you could do it three hours a day for 30 years. It doesn't matter. The same thing, Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican. Why them Democrats? I tell you, they're no good. Now, for years it was, why them Republicans are the only lifesaver for America? Why the only hope for America is them Bushes? I guarantee you, I went to the White House. I went golfing with them. They're the most wonderful people on earth. Speed forward. No, you don't trust them Republicans. No way do you trust them. Why I throw that banner in the river? You can listen to this now. More, more baloney. So that's why I'd rather not do that. You mind? Okay, that opens it up to a call. After two hours and fifteen minutes, I have not. This is a world record, uh, Robert. I have. It's a world record today. I have not taken a single phone call in two hours and fifteen minutes of radio, and I started out exhausted from the allergies. I'm flying right now on on adrenaline and calamari and french fries and uh, gherkins. I'll be back in a minute. I am live after this connect. I think we lost the connection. Play a little Latin music so I know if I'm... Am I communicating with my audience? A little quirk, a little FBI quirker. Yeah. Aquí está Sombrero Mike. Arriba. $1.9 billion requested by the fool on a hill to combat the spread of the Zika virus in Latin America. You believe this? This guy has no limits to his hubris and his madness. He knows that he's out of control, and he knows finally the country has taken a turn against him by the popularity of Sanders and the popularity of Trump. That clown in the White House had the nerve to say he's not just a big government crazy liberal because he knows that everyone knows that's what he is. But worse, listen to this clip 19 on the Savage Nation. Listen carefully to the clown on the hill. We have been very stringent and very tight, and our numbers all check out when it comes yeah, right. to the costs and the benefits uh, that we yeah. apply to these yeah, tests. Right. Sure, Even right. on some of the big regulations you hear about mm -hmm. that you don't like, right? they're not, pa they're not issued unless... Mm -hmm. We th the benefits substantially too hot. Uh, outweigh the costs, um, right. and we can we have the numbers to prove it. So, uh, for those of you who think that uh, I'm just a big government crazy liberal, <laughs> you know, we're we're actually we we crunch some numbers around here. Uh, oh, we take yeah, it very seriously. Can. All right, so so the clown on the hill wants us to believe because he honked his horn that he doesn't spend any money. Even though the, it's thirteen trillion dollar debt, he inherited like one trillion. Now it's thirteen trillion. Printing money to keep the fools in line. He says we don't spend the money unless the benefits outweigh the costs. Uh, Mr. Obama, seventy-two personal assistants for the first lady. Do the benefits outweigh the costs to the American people? No, but the benefits outweigh the costs to her, your wife. Okay, so I see that. You mean the benefits to you and your family? I get it. The use of Air Force One, the abuse of Air Force One, the abuse of Air Force Two, the endless vacations, the golf trips. I see the benefits to you outweigh the cost to the American people. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Take it back. You meant the benefits to you and your family, not to the American people. Got it. Now I understand. So now he wants $1.9 billion to combat the spread of the Zika virus in Latin America. What do you think that money's going to go for? If you read Diseases Without Borders, my bestseller that only came out a week ago, went right to the top of the list, the ebook. What am I saying? What you do is you stop the travel from the countries where Zika is now endemic, where it's out of control, where it's growing. Just slam it shut already. Stop with the idiocy. That's the first rule of epidemiology. Cut it off. You don't let sick people come into the country to spread a disease unless you yourself are sick or hate the country. But, okay, no, he needs money now. The liberal answer to everything. Just throw money at the problem. Don't close the border to these countries. Just throw money at the problem. Then let it go from $13 billion to $15 billion overnight. Ka-ching, Mr. Obama. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage.
It is the Savage Nation. I think I've got a cowbell for my Mercedes. I wonder if it's an option I can get. A cowbell is in the center console that I can tap on with a, with a drumstick. I need a little rhythm back in my life. You know, this is very two-dimensional radio. I've got to tell you the truth. I mean, it's a wonderful, wonderful expression up to a point, but it's two-dimensional. You can't see my paintings. You can't, well, you know, if it's not verbal, how do you know what I'm doing? I want you to think about that. You know, you watch a movie. Look at all the dimensions that can be put together in a movie. And then you look at what always impresses me is everyone thinks that they can do talk radio, which they can't. And there's not a person out there who doesn't think that they couldn't direct or produce a movie, which they can't. You look at the end of a movie, you see like 300 names. All the things that the people do to make that thing happen, whether it's a good TV show, all of the, high, the highly skilled individuals who make a television show work, you know, and you think about, it, oh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, just give me that camera and I'll be a director. No, you can't be a director. You can't be a talk show host. It's the same thing. Either you're good at something or you're not. And if you've listened to the show, you know that sometimes I get frustrated by the dimensions of the show, meaning there are limitations to it. I can only do certain things in radio. It's all about voice, but there's no other expression permitted. And I want to express myself in other ways. Is what I'm, I can almost feel myself breaking out of my own limitations right in, right in front of the audience. I don't know where it's going to lead. I don't know. I'm a guy who just is always inventing stuff and creating stuff. So I read you a poem today. I played a drum on the air. I sang on the air. I ate a sandwich on the air. <laughs> you weren't supposed to hear the sandwich, but I can't help it. I'm a human being. Three hours a day, and then this time of day, I'm not supposed to eat. So thus far, we've talked about who is your inner Sandman. And I said, Rubio is Edelman's. Cruz looks like a vampire. Cruz thinks Duck Dynasty would be a good ambassador. That tells you everything you need to know about him. Then I said, all politicians will disappoint you. Nobody can give you 100%. Stop being a purist. Purists don't win in the real world. Blood in the water. Pope calls for worldwide ban on death penalty. When was he ever a pope? Israel snubs Sanders' outreach because they know that he's not their Sandman. He's a, he's a socialist, and they reject socialism because they know it creates racism. That's what the Israelis say. But I said, at least Sanders offers some change, and that's why Obama's changing his tune about it. I'm not just a big government crazy liberal. And then I said Trump is a verbal cage fighter. He's blowing everyone around him in the cage, which is why we like him. America likes a winner. And we want to see him vanquish our enemies. We want to see our enemies bleeding in the cage and dragged off on a stretcher. There he is. End the story. All of the foreign nations that are bad-mouthing us, the Chinese ripping us off, the Mexican government ripping us off. We'd like to see them taken out of the cage is what we want to see. And he's saying he can do it. And then I, I, mean, I said something, I think, and I still I agree with it to this minute. I said the Republican campaign to date seems to have been Cruz baiting everyone with the holier-than-thou campaign, that he's more conservative than this one, more conservative than that one. You know, Jacques Cuse is like communism. I accuse you, Mr. Trump, of not being a pure enough conservative. I ask you to stand before the American people and prove definitively that you are, in fact, and you will take that conservative loyalty oath right now in front of me, Ted Cruz. And here is the U.S. Constitution. I want you to swear the Bible and the Constitution that you love the Constitution with all your heart, more than you love Melania, and that you are truly a Christian, and you are a chaste man just like me, Ted Cruz. Vote for me because I am the three C's. That's what we're hearing now. And I object to it. I'm sick of it. That's what I'm trying to tell you is going on. So that's what you missed so far. The phone number here is 855-497-282. I haven't taken a call yet, 2 hours and 35 minutes into the show. This is actually a world record for me. You know, people use call. You don't understand about talk radio, what it is. It's a little secret. Should I tell everyone? I've got to be very careful here. No, don't tell them why. No, don't tell them what callers really are to the... Eh, what do I care? You know, it's too far into my career to care. Why hold anything back? A caller is a record. We're like disc jockeys. I know most won't tell you that. Every talk show thinks he could be president, but uh, it's like everyone thinks they can produce a movie or they can do talk radio. But, you know, they're not the president. We're talkers, so you have to have an entertainment factor, an education factor, and then something else, right? Callers are to talk radio what records are to a disc jockey. And sometimes the records are good and sometimes they're bad, and people criticize me and say, oh, you cut callers off. Well, the guy's hemming and hawing, and he shouldn't have gotten on to begin with. 
When you're Mike, I'm here, yeah, I'm in the Bronx, I'm in the Bronx. This morning, last guy, my uncle had a pickle just like your uncle had a pickle. Bingo. He shouldn't have.